Welcome to Break Through the Ordinary Podcast. You know you desire a more impactful, connected, and extraordinary life. That is why we're here to bring you stories from transformational leaders, healers, and entrepreneurs who have found themselves trapped in the ordinary and are now living their most extraordinary life because of a breakthrough moment. Together, we will provide world-class tips and tools enabling you to live purposefully, aligning your heart and soul, because we believe no one should be imprisoned by their past. We are your hosts, Mark and Claudine Tremonte, a sibling duo who once struggled to survive a lonely, ordinary life until we began to utilize revolutionary healing tools and created a thriving, abundant, and meaningful life that we are proud of. Today on this episode of Breakthrough the Ordinary, our guest is Mary Bickdell. Mary is an LCSW speaker, author, podcaster, and former psychotherapist turned success and business coach for the highly educated women in the professional helping fields who are ready to make money coaching. Mary takes a stand for women choosing to be bold, showing up fully, grabbing everything they want personally and professionally, and doing so all unapologetically and guilt-free. Yes. And I stand for that with you. Great. Thank you. All right. Good to see you. Yeah. Welcome back. You know, for our listeners, Mary has joined us in you know, our holiday season in last year in episode 15. So you might catch a different side of her wisdom that we're going to tap into today than that episode. That was a fun Tomorrow. episode. We went deep. We, Very we deep. did. And there are some taglines I still use from that, right? Oh, like, good. I'm right? so glad. That's a, awesome. A, 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 a gracious no versus a resentful yes. Yay, good. And that is a good yeah. lesson we all need to revisit for sure. <laughs> over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we'd like to start off with, if you could share with us a major breakthrough in your life that has shifted you from living in a, you know, an ordinary life to an extraordinary life. And how did you do it? Mm. Well, you know, there's so many breakthroughs, right? I think the biggest breakthrough that I had is, I think really the biggest breakthrough has happened lately. You know, I, I always want to claim my, my most recent breakthrough is the best breakthrough because they're all good breakthroughs. But the one I'm, I'm like, I, I'm on the other side of, if you will, is where I've sat back and I've just, I, I really looked at how I had massive success intolerance. And because of that, I freaking almost destroyed my entire business, broke it apart and, and threw the baby with the bathwater out. And I think the breakthrough with me is, the work that I needed to do on the level of success that I've achieved, which I'm grateful for, um, how many times I stopped myself when I've hit a, a massive milestone. And that's my big breakthrough, my success in tolerance and how to really tolerate that and how to allow myself to step into it, lean into it, appreciate it, not run from it, not feel overwhelmed by the responsibility of it. And um, so... I could talk about that. That's really um, a lot of it. And what was the piece that has you owning the responsibility of your greatness? Oh, oh, my greatness. Wow, that's really good. Part of the breakthrough was recognizing. So I built this huge community. I have a very successful seven-figure business. And I started thinking that I started not really taking credit for the accomplishment. I started really I call this, poo like, this is the stuff I coach my, my clients on, right? I was like poo-pooing and minimizing my success. I never really like acknowledged it fully. And I think that there was a moment when I, I had to acknowledge, holy shit, this is what I created. This is pretty freaking amazing. My clients have extraordinary results. And I was a small part of helping them do that. I think that how could I lead from example? If I tell my clients and coach my clients to honor their successes, define their successes, define who they want to be as a successful businesswoman and owner, then I needed to really do the same. And I thought I had, and I realized I hadn't. I realized that the level of success, all my shit came up, you know, and it always does. And so every level, we have to be really conscious of where our historical patterns of stopping are. And so that's what happened. And it, it was excruciating. I mean, it was several months where I was literally like, I'm going to start all over. Blah, 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 blah. And then one day I'm like, what in the, what am I talking about? And, you know, I have my own coaching, of course. And, and I was like, I w I'm ready to break it all apart. And, and the person said to me, this is all your worthy stuff, Mary. And I was like, for Lord, because <laughs> I've worked on that stuff, you guys, right? But it, I hadn't worked on it when I reached this level. And so each level I work on it, and I just was shocked by it. So it allowed me to take 100% responsibility for where I am, no victimhood, no pointing the finger. 
at those people and my client, those clients and like all of that. It's like, well, who am I? What have I done? What have I accomplished? Where am I headed? You know, I, I, I certainly can relate. We were just having a conversation about this because we're on another, we're going another level also. And it's all the stuff you're pushing up against to go to the next level and the next level. And it's, mm-hmm. it's a great uh, conversation. So what would you say to others what they need to break through to get to that place or for their next level of wherever it is? Because we're always in different levels. Everybody's in some place. I think the first thing that you have to, like right now, no matter whether you're growing or, or you're, you're allowing yourself to be in a steady place, right? Not a stagnant place, not a stuck place. Please stop using that language. Not a stuck place, but a steady place. Like now's the time, not in the mode of crisis, right? Which, whereas we often get in that graspy energy, but right now, like be reflective on where do you stop yourself historically? And we all know. So it's not like, oh, I don't know. I never stopped myself. That's bull. We all quit on ourselves on some level. And whether that level is in business, whether that is not charging more, that is not showing up, that is somehow like sabotaging and undermining the foundations of our businesses, whether that is, are we stressed out and we're bitching at our kid or yelling at our husband or not having sex, like whatever it looks like, we all know ourselves. Now that doesn't mean that we can help ourselves. That doesn't mean that we don't need coaches to support us through the transformation and then the main, um, the execution and the maintenance, right? We need that. But I think everybody can take a moment to say, where have you had success? Where have you had some, where, where have you had big moments that you minimized, that you poo-pooed and that led to some sort of sabotage? We all know what they are. Like when people are like, I don't really know. I don't, I never believe that. Yeah. But I, I appreciate you saying that, right? Awareness is step one, but you know, really acting upon and embodying that sometimes we do need, you know, sometimes it could be a great supporter. It could, it could be like my brother and I, but, and then there's the next level where we get to bring in a professional who helps guide us. Right. Well, I think there's awareness. That's true. I think it's like not, you know, we can have awareness and then we have to have acknowledgement and then we have to have acceptance that we are the cause of whatever we've become aware of. Like, well, that is, that is the major part of it. We have to acknowledge and accept that where we are today is from our choices or decisions and our actions, period. Drop mic, right? Because I, I find in, in my coaching or psychotherapy is, right, like they did it to me, right? It's the circumstances, it's the victim. And, right, turning to accountability, right, I authored, I created, I chose, <laughs> is really a critical piece. Right, and I, I, not just a critical piece, but I think the thing is, is that sometimes we turn our back on that because we want to hold on so hard to the circumstance. Well, you don't understand what really happened was. I think that the moment for personal, what I believe, at least this is what I'm claiming of what I've experienced of late, is taking true 100% responsibility is actually so much more liberating and freeing than the offloading of our personal power onto another person or a client. And that's happened in my personal life and also in my business life where I'm like, hmm, where have I turned things over? And where have I given up my own sovereignty around my success and security and safety for myself as a human being, as a woman, as a, you know, uh, for my financial future and all of the things. I appreciate your presencing us that because right when we take a responsibility, I think there's a distinction. People collapse that with, oh my God, and I, I create all this mess versus holy shit. Now I can do, I, I can create anything I want. I can change the story. I can make new choices. I like that, 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 like there's, mm-hmm. there, you can navigate and explore when we take accountability and responsibility. I do for our listeners, you know, because we've spoke about the fact that, yes, you're a psychotherapist, you, you still, you know, and a former psychotherapist, you still hold your license or not, and a, and a business coach. Okay. Same here. I do both. So I, for me, I'd like to understand how you have the distinction from a business model on coaching and psychotherapy. I mean, I, I think philosophically, we could talk for a second and say, right, one's regulated, you know, by licensure, one is optimal, you know, it's optional regulation. Right. There's there's different standards and educational behind both of these insurance covers. Psychotherapy does not cover coaching, but 
That's that technique, technical pieces. I would rather speak in from the, the business perspective as you see it. So my psychotherapy clients who want to market their business versus my coaching clients, right? Who want to market their business and or their transition or they're pivoting into, you know, we, I'm very, very definitive on the difference between coaching and providing therapy is there. I will, you know, I will maybe talk about something controversial. You know, in therapy, I think that not everybody needs therapy. I think that a lot of times people show up at a therapist's door because they literally don't know about life coaching. Now, I know those of us who are in the coaching world are like, what are you talking about? It's so saturated out there. It's not. It's like the biggest wide open field that there is. So in a therapy client has a diagnosis, is still dealing with their dysfunction, their trauma, and it's negatively impacting their life. Uh, a coaching client has healed a lot of their stuff, or they might be working with a therapist separately. And they are very forward focused on goal attainment and moving through a process. So it's not that we don't look as a coach. I, it's not that I don't, I'm a behaviorist. I'm a cognitive behaviorist. So it's not that I don't look at patterns. I just talked about my pattern. It's that we're not staying there. We can nod to it as point of data and information and move forward. So as a cognitive behavioral coach, really, that's what I am. That's, that's what I work with clients and my business clients. So it's the same thing. It's really about what you think about, you bring about your thoughts, feelings, and emotions and how that impacts yourself as a, when I was life coaching, relationship coaching, and how that impacts your ability to create massive, sustainable, profitable money in your business. I appreciate that. Cause I, it's, you know, my, that's how I have it too, right? We psychotherapy, we go to the past to heal. And to me, coaching, we're from present to future, you know, designing and, and creating. We're speaking about profit, business, you know, how to take it to the next level. What, what is your money mindset? What is the mindset you bring to it? And can we just, just distinguish that? Can you also explain what money mindset for our listeners? So we're all in the same distinction there for a moment. Yeah. So money mindset is the, is the construct that you come to the table with all things related to money. So if it's, so when we think about a money mindset, we have created this mindset. Some of it is so unconscious, right? It's unconscious because of our, our conditioning, how we were raised. And first of all, let's just start with the, the fact that money is neutral. And our money mindset assigns a construct around it. So for some people, like, I can't make a lot of money because then I'll be those people. And, and people with money are bad. or I can't afford it. Or literally yesterday I was talking to somebody and they're like, I allow myself one credit card. And I'm like, mm, you know, so your money mindset really speaks to the relationship that you have with money. And if you want to be profitable and successful in a business, you need to clean up your money mindset. Why? Because if you're not understanding the value of the offer, your business offer, you will undercharge, you will overdeliver, you can have resentment. When you're on a sales call, you will have pushback. If Sally Jane is like, I never put money on credit. And then, so, you know, your potential client is like, I, I don't use credit cards. You're going to lose the sale. Why? Because you're just going to be like, well, I understand. Instead of really looking at like helping coach her through the possibilities. So really money mindset is how, what kind of relationships and thoughts you have about money, about people who love money, about what you charge. One of the things that I like to say is if you're not sure on what money mindset is, here's a, here's a simple, simple way for you to know whether you have a good relationship with money or not. If money was a puppy, a little baby puppy, and I know baby puppies redundant, but it still sounds cute, right? If, if your money was a baby puppy, would it be like so cute and it rolls over and it's got that big puppy belly and you just tickle, tickle, scratch it, scratch it? Or would it be like on a, like the poster child for the Humane Society? If you have a poster child for the Humane Society money, puppy, you got money mindset problems because you're avoiding looking at money. You're denying that money needs to be tended to, taken care of. That um, you're denying that money uh, really allows us to have every single thing that we want in life. 
And if you want to make a big impact, you have to make a lot of money. What gets me, I swear, this gets me every time when people are like, you're just talking about money. I talk about how to make money coaching and talk about all freaking day. When people are like, I don't really need a lot of money, that's denial. I don't really care about making a lot of money. That's selfish. Huh? Don't come tell me that you want to help people and then say you're not going to make a lot of money. Don't come tell me you want to help people and then not be willing to learn the art and the skill of building a profitable business. Like, I, like I really like this is my button. <laughs> So I could keep going. Okay. I like oh. it because you're break. Even pieces I hold, you're breaking. And it's like, uh, 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 you know, yeah. and I'm going, I want to keep opening to what you're saying because it is, it's, well, you know, there, I believe there is people, okay, but maybe there's a few monks over there or something, but the truth is money helps. Money brings influence. It doesn't have to be any negative. There's no negative there. We, you know, maybe some people use it for negative. I don't know. Unless you yes. sign it because money's because, neutral. It literally is Because the more money you have, the more influence, the more you can help people, the more you can show people, you can be an example. Um, it, it's life, it's energy, it's, it's all of it. And you're just, you're just clicking more mindset and breaking these ideas or these constructs. Good, I'm so glad. You know, money is like, it's an, it's an amplifier. See, this is the thing. People worry like, oh my God, I'm going to be successful. And then I'm going to turn into a raging asshole. Well, like if you're already a raging asshole, money's going to give you a, a bigger voice and opportunity for that. But if you're already somebody who's wonderful and delightful and generous, and you can look at money as a possibility for making a greater contribution in the world, then let's make, help you make a shit ton of money, a lot of money. Let, let, allow yourself. And here's the other thing, you know, I work with so many like helpers, right? We're all in the therapist helper world. I'm always like, go help yourself and your family. When people are like, I don't want to make a lot of money or I work all the time or I'm so burned out. I'm like, what about your family? Why are you giving the best to other people and not to your family? That's a big point for me about why we need to be making money too. It's not just so that it, we can contribute and buy like you know, the school in some foreign country. It's so that your kid can go to the good college. Your kid can go to the fun camp, that you can live in a, a beautiful home where you can come home and you can feel relaxed and tended to. Ugh, I just, that just breaks my heart. It's just, there's so much um, to how we're missing out. Even the simple things in life, like having just the best organic food. Why wouldn't you want to make money more money just so you could freaking feed your family better. Like just like baseline kind of stuff. I was going to get vulnerable for a moment here and just share, because I think a lot of people have this and, 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 and it's pushing up against like, there's a part of me that goes, but everybody else doesn't have it. Or what about the people that don't have it? Or, oh my God, there's not enough when, when, and logically I know there's more abundance than ever. Everybody can be abundant but there's that piece of me that wants to relate to people that don't have it or, you know, is there enough for everybody? Or if, you know, if I'm doing it all for my family, hell with that. Like, I'm just saying those are pieces that are pushing on me and I, I'm working on it too of releasing those pieces that create, you can't go to the next level. I mean, we're talking about going to a higher level, you know, wherever level you're at. But right now I know me and my sister are are going, we've been living pretty nicely in many ways, abundantly, but the next level, and it's to give, you know, the more money we make, the more we get to give, the more we get to share the gifts and help others and create that abundance. So yeah. I just wanted to share that. Thank you for sharing this. Cause I think this is so relatable to so many people when they're in that moment of transformation, right? It's like the question becomes when we're talking about, is there enough? Or if you take your piece of the pie is there any pie left? Really? And that scarcity and limiting thought is in, in the way, right? That's part of it. And like doubling down on that, like you having less does not mean they have more. That would be the equivalent of saying something like, oh my God, that person has COVID. Let me go get COVID so we both can be have COVID together right? Oh my God, that person doesn't have any money. So let me just not make any money so they, that I cannot have any money with them, right? How does that shift things for you when you think about it from that perspective? Not what I want to do, not how I want to live. No, because I know going to that place is not going to help anybody.
Exactly. Exactly. And you having more money doesn't detract from them. And it doesn't change you. I think that that's one of the fears that a lot of us have is like, oh my God. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to, like you said, I'm not going to be relatable to people who don't have money. I, I, I kind of don't agree with that at all. Right. I mean, you know, I, again, it's back to money amplifies us. And just because I own two houses and I have a lot of money, doesn't mean that I'm still not volunteering, that I'm still not giving, you know, like food to my food bank, like all of the things that are important to me, if anything, being able to work three days a week and make the kind of money I do, I have a lot more free time that I can volunteer and contribute to things that are like of, of heart value to me, right? Heart and soul value to me. I find it's interesting. I have several clients I coach who are very financially successful in different industries. And yet the idea of, I'll just say, I increased my coaching rates and they were like, uh, we're done. And let me just tell you, it wasn't a huge increase. And it was like, same thing. It was like, that's fine. You don't need to. And it's so interesting to hear the scarcity when the abundance, right? Like she just closed a $3 million deal and a 5 million. That, that commission on those will put that, this person into a four or $500,000 tax bracket this year. And I'm like, okay, right? Like, do you, if you want to look at that conversation, we can. But if you don't, then it's been my honor to coach you for these last year, right? Like, okay, right? Like, because certainly some of our coaching, I'm not saying I'm responsible for it, but I was the guide on the side, right? Like, there were certainly breakthroughs. So I see so much worth and scarcity around the abundance allowance or the money mindset. And I think it's like fascinating for people who hold on. And I have it. Like when you were just talking about the, the, you know, the dog and I'm like, no, I like the little cute little pink belly. And then I was like, wait a second. One of the things that I'm aware of is I invest and I have been since I was very young. I don't follow up on my investments until someone delivers the news or I get like a statement. I'm like, holy shit, this quarter we went down. And so what is that? Like that, that's like abusing or neglecting the puppy. So I get to take a really look at that. Like, what is that? Like I invest and go, I'm done. Like it's going to take care of itself, right? I I have a, I have a guy, right? Or, you know, a person and like, no, no, that's, you know, I don't do that on my health, right? I walk every day. I go to my Pilates. Why am I not looking up on that? Exactly. To the point about doubling or tripling or making, you know, charging more money. Here's the thing, you know, the truth of the matter is, is that when we become more proficient with our coaching and helping our clients, that value ratio increases and we deserve to be compensated. And there's going to be people that come along with the, for the ride. And then there's the people that are not going to, and it's frequent that when you do an, a price increase that, because remember, it's kind of like dating, let's put it in the dating world, right? It's like, there's moments when you're dating and let's just say, then you go to school and the guy that you're dating or the person that you're dating doesn't. It's not that that person isn't, is a bad person. It's just that you've grown and they, if they can't come along on the ride, then they can't come along on the mm-hmm. ride. And that's very okay. much so. so for you as a coach, how do you work with people to harness their power and owning their power um, so that they can, you know, level up, embrace, be bold, however that looks. You mean literally like how I like be more specific. So I can be well, really you know, concrete for you. If someone's coming to you for, right, the, to, to manifest, to make more money, to really level up their game professionally, if that isn't even transitioning from psychotherapist to coach, is there a particular way that you approach having them own that power of themselves, that sovereignty, that, to claim it? Right. So there's two really things that, you know, I work with people who are brand new and moving into coaching and then people who already are selling coaching. And then I like to help them get into what I call the 5% club. That's my mastermind, the top 5% of earners, which is 300 to $500,000 a year working three days a week. Cause most of my people, they really are about time. Right. Um, and then of course, when you get to the 500,000, then we can talk to the millions, but really getting, you know, 300 to 500,000, most people in the world can live very well on that. And really the, the beginning of every single thing I do with every single client is everything around mindset related to their current successes. Um, and really getting confirmation bias for their brain on the front end 
Because when they're growing, your brain, our brains are designed, it's going to look for everything to hold us, you know, in the warm blanket, right? It wants us sitting our asses on the sofa, eating M&Ms with the warm blanket. And so I love starting clients with understanding what have you done successfully, because when you're tried, when you're growing, you have to have some confirmation bias for proof for yourself, now, here's the question that I often get is like, but I've never made a million dollars, Mary. How can, what proof do I have? Well, you've probably proven because all of my clients have multiple degrees and are highly educated. So you've already proven that you can follow through. That's your proof right there. Not that you've made a million dollars, but that you can follow an ABC one, two, three process. And so that I, I walk clients through the pro- a process for goal attainment. And it always starts with their um, thinking on the front end. And here's another thing. I love this one. I also work with them on the front around their core values. This is the magic. And this is the reason why. So the, most of the time, frankly, people don't even like really sit and think, what are my core values? What do I stand for? When you know what you stand for, a couple things happen. You will not give a resentful yes, which we talked about. So go back and listen to that other episode. You'll never give a resentful yes, because you're so solid that you can lean on your values. And then you don't need to apologize anymore because these are your life and core values. Now, when it comes to business, this is the good news. Also, when you know your values, that's how you show up for your marketing. And then the beautiful thing with that is that... The people who come into your world that you've attracted are coming in because you've represented to the world your core values. So it's this beautiful connection. So for example, I'm very candid. I'm very direct. My core values are um, time and truth. And of course, like compassion, right? I mean, I'm a, I'm a helper. Um, so I'm extremely direct because I don't want to waste people's time. Well, people who resonate with somebody direct, they love me. People who don't <laughs> like someone as direct as I am, they go running away really, really fast. And I'm okay with that. I would rather be very direct, especially in the online space, especially in marketing, especially when people are like, I don't know how to build a business. Nobody's ever told me. I want to be very like candid, direct, specific to eliminate their overthink, over confusion and overwhelm, which we all have every time we level up. Hmm. Okay. Is that your coaching program also? Is that your one-on-one or is that your mastermind or all three? Like that's just, that's. Yeah, I don't, I really, I really moved away from doing one-on-one unless it's like a very extraordinary situation. Um, so those are really different levels. We go deeper in, of course, in the mastermind because people have already skinned their knees a couple times. So I have a program called Make Money Coaching, the foundations program. It's weekly live coaching and it's, you know, it's getting everything tight. Once you've gotten some clients under your belt, you've scraped your knees, you've cried a little bit, you've done your first Facebook live or whatever the hell it is, and you've sold coaching, then the 5% club and the 5% club mindset piece is deeper still because growth, just like what you were talking about, Mark, it's like pushing up as you level up, you're pushing up against, oh my gosh, now I'm going to make more money or now I'm going to charge more. And now my visibility, or for me, like I said, on the top of this, when, when my big breakthrough was, I have this level of responsibility in a sense, because of this global community that I've created over the years. And how do I want to show up? So it's really when they get to that 5% club mastermind level is they've built the community and now they're in that leadership mode. And they're like, whoa, I've maybe, maybe they've been a solopreneur or maybe, you know, they've not ever had anything on a bigger scale. And so that can be a little frightening. You know, I'm loving this conversation. I'm like, I feel like we could go for hours deeply into all these pieces of what we're butting up against and and these mindsets. And do you have something, you know, we're all in different places and I want to honor everybody listening. Um, You're in a certain place. We're in a certain place. Individually, we're all in certain places. What tools and strategies can a person just start to incorporate in their life, even to start stepping? You, You know, some people are, you know, these have been interesting times we're living in and people are, I don't want to say stuck, but you know, don't know where to go, don't know what to do. What are some strategies, tools they can start to 
even turn towards that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I, I'm actually, you know, that's one of the uh, uh, master classes that I have. Um, it's about pivot, grow, and build your coaching business. But, you know, part of the pivot is is this, is here's the bottom line. It's like you have to make the decision first that you are willing to be uncomfortable living out what you really want inside. That is what you have to do first because it will be hard. I'm, you know, all this like ease and flow and everything. Yeah, that's good. But it's good after you've like gotten into the ease and flow on the front end. It's hard. It's hard when you have a big vision and everyone around the Sunday dinner table is like, what are you talking about? You want to do what you want to And it's hard. And I'm a believer that our truest love needs to be for ourselves first and not in um, what some people would perceive as like being selfish and with a negative connotation, but being the, the, the reality is like, you are unique. No one ever will exist like you and no one ever has. And we are here with these God given gifts that we need to show up and, and actualize and bring our voices. And it's not easy. And most people will never, ever do it. There's a saying, right? That like more songs are unsung in the graveyard or whatever that is. You know, it's like one of those really sappy, make you feel like crap. Holy shit. We're all going to die kind of things. Right. But that's the truth. Like there comes a moment when you're like, does what your sister who's doing nothing with her life at least like that you don't want for your life. Maybe she's doing her thing for her life. Does, does her opinion really matter? And will it matter in 20 years, five years, one year, one day? When you're looking back going, I listened to my damn sister and now look what I got, nothing. Or I don't have the thing I really want. So I think the very first thing that's the hardest is making the decision that you're willing to walk the fire walk through the fire with people in your life. And here's the other thing. So often people are like, I'm afraid to be alone. Like what's going to happen? My husband's going to leave me. My sister's going to think I'm horrible or blah, 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 blah. Here's the news. Those of us who have success, we don't judge you. You think we're judging you. We're not judging you at all. If anything, here's my hand. It's how it's being held out for you. There's plenty of room at the success table. A lot of times people who don't have the level of success they want or they've never or they've betrayed themselves because they haven't gone for something, they think there's no room. There's more than enough room at the success table for every single person. But you have to decide that you're willing to do the hard work, even in the face of everybody saying you're crazy. Appreciate the willingness to be uncomfortable, to get to, to live in your purpose. You know, as we wrap up yet another impactful conversation, though, I do want to ask you about, you know, where your boldness play, right? You're, that's one of your signature, or, you know, um, people follow you on, on, on social media, the boldness. How do you use that with your financial wealth? And you may have spoken into this already, um, but I, I think our, for our listeners, right, right, the, I love the boldness. So being bold, and that's an acronym that stands for being a brave, outgoing leader, deciding. So the brave, outgoing leader, right? The acronym, deciding, deciding to what I call lead a life uncommon, which is also the name of my podcast. So it's really back to that decision and, and the honoring that it takes bravery. It takes a lot of courage. Bravery ain't easy, but it's so worth it. And the outgoing piece is, look, sitting in, you know, with the warm blanket, like your brain wants you to do, that's only going to get you more of what you got. And we have to be outgoing. Like, and not everyone is as boisterous as I am and as direct as I am. So it doesn't have to be like, you have to be like me, right? It has to be, you have to do something different than you're currently doing. If you want something different than what you currently got, that's the outgoing piece. I think that all we all have to recognize that we are leading our life and we may have led ourselves to where we don't want to be. And we have the power. This goes back to what we talked about on the front end, taking 100%, 100% responsibility for where we are. That's true leadership for ourselves. 
And then of course, like I said, the decision and, and, you know, it's deciding it, you know, I had to make the decision about creating wealth for myself and not really, like I am the primary breadwinner in my home and I'm in my fifties. So that was like a big deal. It pushed up against <laughs> all of my stuff. Like you're the man, you're supposed to make money. What the fuck? Oh my God. Like all of that. Right. It was very, very challenging. Right. And I had to really sit back. And this is honestly where I was in the last couple of months where you guys have seen, you know, seen some transformation with me, um, is that was also part of my work. Like, huh, what if this is the way it is? And the question was less about my husband because he's doing, I mean, he's doing his thing. His business is going. It was more about me looking at myself saying, how did, how much did I offload my financial security onto my husband? No matter, look, and I've made, like I, I've made, um, you know, seven figures in my business. So it's not that I don't make a lot of money. And that was a very fascinating moment when I'm like, I have made a lot of money and yet I'm still pointing to my husband. Like you're supposed to quote, take care of me. You're supposed to be the one to have security for me. And it was the dawning. Oh my God, I've offloaded my financial, my, my safety and security onto another human being. <sighs> that was so liberating. And it was so hard because it's that even next level of, hundred percent responsibility. Like I really am in charge of my own personal safety and security, no matter what happens. And I, and, and once I had that as a breakthrough and it was ugly, I want to say the truth. <laughs> it was ugly personally. It was ugly with my husband. It was just like, it was one of those like, rah, rah, rah. and, and thank God that happened. Right. Thank God that happened because now I really look at nothing to do with him. Right. And I, we're so happily married and we're very good and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, huh, how can I now let, like, where, where am I free to really create the wealth that I really want? I want to buy apartment complexes. I want to do different donations. I want to teach my daughter how to leverage true passive income, how to invest at a different level. And I was like, oh, I was like not doing all those things in a way because also I was like, well, you're supposed to know how to do all. I'm like, you didn't know how to do all that. Mm. I can do all of that. And so that was very liberating. Mm. I know that that was kind of the long answer for leadership hey, around thank you money. For sharing that's, your journey. That's the truth. Yeah, answer. Everything is great in this conversation. Yeah. So <laughs> there's no, no way around it. So, you know, as we're wrapping up, is there any final words of wisdom that you want to depart on us in the audience? The the bottom line is is we have this one shot here, right? And that is so, we have so much opportunity that just goes wasted. And I, I want everyone to focus on, you know, pivoting their mindset to abundance and opportunity. Because when we're focused on like the lack or even, you know, the example earlier that you gave Mark about, like, if I have, if they have, if they don't have enough, like when we can turn toward the opportunities that we have. And, and even in our mind that as a thought, there are opportunities out there that I might not be seeing yet because I'm working on building my business. I'm working on my mindset. I'm working on being in a different relationship with money. That is the freedom. Because when we have that as a focus, then opportunities and abundance and overflow happen in our life. That's the difference too. That's another conversation about really working with clients to focus on abundance and overflow. And because that will take care of everything. That will take care of your debt, your mortgage, your da-da-da-da-da. Some people are like, I just want to make enough money to get out of debt. And I'm like, that's the wrong perspective. We're not focusing on that. We're focusing on like, how much money can you make doing something that you love and that you're really good at? You get results and you help your clients get results. Then you will never have to worry another day of your life about money. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I, yeah. Thank you for being a yes again. 
Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, sharing your, uh, yes. yeah. Yes. Um, it was I'm so sure fun. there'll be a time we're going to touch base again. Um, and who knows? Another love our conversation. Yes. Huh? And if ever you want to have us on your podcast <laughs> as a, an uncommon life, yes. it is not norm, right? And that's know, one of the gifts that, that Morgan and I know we have as siblings who have both been on journeys who, right, we've weaved in and out. And this is our time of weaving together. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, and being it's bold. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes. yes. So as always, we Amen. wish you well. And again, thank you. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you.